Hi, my name is Gina Schaefer. I'm the owner of four DC-based Ace Hardware stores and two in Baltimore. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about, about power tools and more specifically using power drills. Um, it's one of the questions we most often get when homeowners come in. They haven't used a drill, they're not sure what they need or why. Um, and so there's a couple basic questions we ask and then I want to show you how to actually choose the correct tools and use the drill while, when you get it home. Two main things to think about when you come in and need to rent or buy a power drill. First of all, what types of walls or substances do you think you're most likely going to be drilling in? If you are drilling in softer substances, hollow walls like drywall, you can use just your basic drill. The one that I have here as an example is um, a battery drill, which means you can take it all over your house. You're not attached to a cord, um, and it is not as powerful as what you would use to go through a brick wall or a concrete wall. So if you lived in an apartment or a house that actually had brick or concrete walls, you would probably use a hammer drill. Um, a hammer drill, although it looks similar, um, is a much stronger drill. And you can see this one has a cord attached to it, which helps gives it more, give it more power and um, the power lasts longer. So those are the two main things to think about first. What, walls are, what types of walls you're going to go into. Um, whether you need a cord or want a cord, you know, if you're getting into hard to reach places or you're not going to be near a power outlet, um, it is much easier if you use a cordless drill. The next type of tool that you'll need is the, the drill bit. Um, typically when you choose the fasteners for the item that you're hanging, those fasteners are going to dictate what kind or what type of drill bit you need, what size. So you can see here I have a couple different options and they come in different shapes, different diameters. Um, and then at the bottom, the nice thing about this um, particular brand is it tells you what you need depending on what you're drilling in. So going back to that hammer drill using the masonry or concrete um, substrate, you're going to need a masonry drill bit. And so this one is specifically marked masonry. So if you're going into concrete or brick, you should use this drill bit. Um, if you're going into wood or drywall or metal, you would use a type of drill bit that says wood, metal, or drywall. Um, this final example that I have here, the R2 bits are, are interesting. They're made a little differently and they are also um, made to go through all of those substrates so that if you just wanted to buy one type of, of drill bit, you can do that with the R2 bit. The length and life of a drill bit depends on um, what you're drilling into, how often you're using it, how hard is the surface, how hard do you have to um, force the drill to, to make the hole. Just going through drywall, for example, you should be able to use a drill bit over and over and over again. If it's a harder surface like concrete, that drill bit may not last as long. And you'll notice that um, using them, that the tops will start to wear down and you may be required to get another one. So those, that's the next thing to think about. What type of drill bit you need, um, the size, the diameter, um, all based on the size hole that you're going to make, obviously. The other thing that a drill do, which is really, really handy, is it will turn into a electric screwdriver. So once you've created the hole, let's say you want to put nails or, I'm sorry, screws into the hole, um, you can add a a screwdriver bit to the end of your drill and it turns into an electric screwdriver. If you're doing lots of work, it's certainly easier on your arms if you don't have to continue to crank a screwdriver all day long. Alright, so the chuck is the front of the drill and if you can sort of zero in on this, you can see in this part of the drill um, these little nubs are coming out, my professional name for it. This is where you're going to put the drill bit. So you're going to make it wide enough that the drill bit fits in it and then you're going to tighten it. That's all you need to do. You're turning it counterclockwise to make it tight, okay? If you want to take it out, you turn it clockwise, just hold on to the bit while you do it, it pulls right out. And that is the same with any drill, um, the way that it goes in and out. This hammer drill, for example, um, does not have the rotating mechanism, so it requires a chuck key, which is typically attached to the drill, um, and it works just like a Allen wrench. You put it into this hole and make the nubs bigger or smaller depending on what size drill bit you're using. We're going to put this one in. I'm just going to do a little hole. It's amazing how many people haven't used a drill and how easy it can be. So I just want to demonstrate. Typically, like a gun actually, there's a trigger. Remember squirt gun days from when we were kids. Trigger underneath, so you're holding it like this. There is a button on the side of drills. It's almost always in the exact same place and this is the go forward or reverse button. So. Pull the trigger, get a feel for it. This drill's actually in reverse right now. I'm going to flip that switch and it's going to go forward. Place the drill bit against the wall where, you, where you'd like the hole to be. Hopefully by this point you've measured where you'd like the hole to be. Start to apply slight pressure. 
speed it up if you want. And you can see the wall is falling away from where the hole is going. And I've pushed right through. And the drill should come right back out. Okay? One thing to keep in mind when you're using a drill is what's behind the wall. If you are going to hit a wooden stud or a metal stud, not necessarily the end of the world, but I've had folks come in who have gotten um, who've gotten stuck because there are electrical wires where they're trying to drill. Um, perhaps there's drywall over brick, in which case you probably want to use a bit that's made for the brick. It will easily go through the drywall and then it will be strong enough to be able to tackle the brick once you get to that part of the wall behind you. That's it. <laughs>